Welcome to the Parasite Podcast, a show about me and you. We are Venom. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Parasite Podcast, and I am so excited for our guest today because this young man has actually been in the Venom movie amongst many other great projects that we're going to talk about today. So I want to give him a chance to introduce himself and tell, tell you guys where you can follow him on social media. This is Jared Bank, and Jared, say hello to everybody. Hey, what's up? Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, social media. Um, I do believe I have a Twitter. Um, I haven't been on it in years, but I do have a um, an Instagram that I'm pretty on regular. Uh, I'm on pretty regularly, um, and it's all lowercase Mr. M R underscore Bankins B A N. K-E-N-S. Thank you, sir. Hey, you're welcome, man. And uh, everyone listening, uh, that you'll see that in you know written out above right here on the screen. So you'll see that above his of Jared's picture. And then also have links to his Instagram and Twitter to follow him there. And I'll also have links to some of the movies we're going to talk about today that he's been in and that he has coming up. Uh, there's trailers out for them. So we're going to get into all that today. But if you want to follow this man's work, please do. The guy's awesome. He's been friends with me for years, ever since uh, before the first Venom movie came out. And uh, he's a great person to support, and he's a great actor. So we're going to get into all that today. So and I'm going to – you're welcome. I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to shower you with uh, love today, man. Um, so, oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's funny when we, the way we met, and I'd love to get your perspective on it before we get into your stuff too, because I I took a gamble. Like, I, you know, I was just starting the Venom vlog. We were maybe like 20 episodes in, and I saw IMDb started updating, you know, with, with actors who played parts in the movie. And I saw your name on there, and I said, you know, I recognize this guy. I've seen him in a couple things. He's very, very good at what he does. And I can't wait to see what part he plays in this movie. So I took a gamble and I was like, I'm going to write him a DM on Instagram and see if he'll do an intro for the show. And you were the first one. And because you did, after you, we had Ariadne do a vo uh, do an intro. We had uh, Martin Batts Bradford and Ellen Gor uh, Gerstein. So you really started this whole thing and, and really helped elevate my channel in a lot of ways with some clout because people are like, hey, he's got actors from the Venom movie, you know, doing intros for a show. So, oh, that's cool. <laughs> so what what made you say yes to my insane uh, request? And, uh, and you know, what was kind of your perspective of, of like, oh, this guy just does Venom? Like, what's that all about? Like, I'm kind of curious what you thought of all that. Oh, man, honestly, like, when I got a DM, I was like, oh, no way, somebody's a fan, and they looked on IMDb and saw me. That's literally <laughs> what I did. I was like, oh, sweet. And I was like, oh, my God, he's got a show. And then I, yeah, I was like, oh, man, I hope his, I, I hope I deliver something where uh, guys like him really appreciate it. So it was like, that would make me feel good, because I am a comic book fan, and I'm a more so animation, but, you know, I'm just, I, I am a fan of, you know, nerd culture as well. I, I, I was steeped in it growing up. So it's like, I don't know. I've met some people that I've wanted to, like, so that I so badly wanted to work with. And then a couple of them turned out to be not so great. You know, it, it doesn't matter if they were either a genuinely nice person or not. It's just that perhaps they're having a bad day or something. Sure. But I know that if anybody were to ever reach out to me, I always said that to myself, like, yeah, I, I want to be nice. I, because I know how it feels to uh, <laughs> to meet some heroes. Not heroes. Not that I'm anybody's hero, but you know, meet someone, um, especially in film or uh, film and television, and, and they turn out to be not so pleasant. So I've always made that my thing to just be like, yeah, I'll talk to anybody. Plus, I love people in general. <laughs> That was a huge ramble for nothing. <laughs> no, that's I apologize. Not, not at all, man. That's <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, it, it's it's cool to hear that. And uh, and no, actually, you, you're you are uh, incorrect, sir. You have become a, a hero of mine. Um, I really love watching your career, and then also just becoming a friend of yours. Oh, thanks, man. It it, it I just something I never thought was you know like it's one of those things where I'm like, oh man, like I can't believe some of the people I I've known and talked to. It, it's Anytime I have a bad day, I sit there and go, well, think about this, man. You had like Jared and Ariana and Martin and and, uh, and Ellen and Tom Hardy, you know, and Todd McFarlane. You had all these great people um, on your show. It's like, how can you really complain about a bad day when, you, when you've when you had so much, you know, 
um, gifts, so many gifts showered on you. So, so no, you have become a hero of mine, and I'm, we're going to talk about why because I love a lot of your work. But oh, be- thanks, man. <laughs> before we get into your work, I appreciate that. You're, oh, dude, you're very welcome. You know, uh, get ready for compliments. Tell, get ready for it. Um, buckle in, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, before we get into your work, though, I do want to. I'm kind of curious about that upbringing because you said, you know, we talked a little bit before the, the we started recording that you kind of grew up in the Louisiana area. You grew up with nerd culture stuff and then you got into acting. Could you tell us, uh, you know, how how that trajectory happened? Like, where where are you from? What nerd stuff did you get into? And then how did you end up in the field of acting? Oh, wow. I, uh, well, I was born in... Uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana, mm-hmm. um, but I grew up in Westlake, Louisiana, which is this you know little small town over the bridge. Uh, they they're considered a city just by you know the number of the population, which is ten thousand. I don't even know if it's honestly that many people still. <laughs> uh, it doesn't seem like it, but I grew up there. It's a uh, pretty half and like there's more. That's more Cajun culture, mm-hmm. not as much as Lafayette and. Uh, areas up there in Bill Platt, but Lake Charles is still pretty Cajun, much more so than New Orleans. Hmm. Um, and those those towns like that tend to be, you know, deeply religious, either Catholicism or uh, Pentecostal or Baptist. And I grew up in a, a pretty, uh, well, pretty, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, uh, pretty radical, but not, in the, I don't want to say in a negative way. Sure. Um, Pentecostal on uh, both sides of my my family so we weren't allowed to, to do we were allowed to watch movies things like that but um, we couldn't go to the movie theater um, certain video games were off limits um, but my dad was a big comic book fan in spite of all that uh, both my parents were uh, pretty big comic book fans uh, my dad had a huge collection of uh, the Two Gun Kid and Spider Man comics oh, yeah. uh, from the '60s and '70s. Yeah, like for like old old Spider Man, like John Romita Senior era uh, Spider Man comics and Fantastic Four. Sweet. Um, so yeah, my parents loved that. My parents loved film. Uh, I guess what really got me into wanting to be in movies, the very first one was. Um, God, I'd, I'd really have to say it's a couple of it's a couple of things that made me want to get into movies. It was going to Universal Studios the first time as a kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, since we're in Louisiana, we you know it wasn't that far of a drive uh, to go to Orlando, Florida. It was still a trek, but it wasn't that bad. Right. Uh, so we'd go there. We we had been there a few times when I was a kid. Uh, the Universal Studios watching them there in MGM Studios seeing everything behind the scenes, the uh, TV series movie Magic, and uh, Lon Chaney Sr., are you familiar with him? Oh, big time. Yeah, he he and Mel Blanc are actually my, those are my two favorite actors. I'm like, Mel Blanc's the greatest voice actor to ever live, and, and Lon Chaney for me is the best, uh, at least silent film actor. I, for me, he's the best uh, American actor. Nice. Uh, so those are the guys that got me really wanting to to get into that um but yeah it's just like i don't know anything i could get my my hands on that uh i guess anything fantasy sci-fi or um a little a little far from reality although now i'm just steeped in documentaries that's all i like (laughs) to watch now but when i was a kid i was really really big into uh really really big into fantasy and sci-fi but yeah all that that uh action figures everything i uh i think having older siblings too that uh that knew the value of things like star wars toys uh Hmm. old t-man action figures um so being around that and those early geo cities websites of uh custom action figures and stuff like so that that's kind of what i was that that's what i was really into when i was little when i was a kid um yeah i think yeah that's 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 pretty much what got me into acting and studying theater and uh uh then i got out of college i didn't finish okay um 
What was your first? What yeah, was your first movie? Yeah. So, oh, sorry to interrupt. The first I, I was, movie. Yeah. What was? Oh. Count, where did, do you remember what? Like. Oh no! You're not. Yeah. A, you can interrupt me. <laughs> you can interrupt me anytime. Uh, my uh, first film. It was this short film called um, East Stackton. Mm-hmm. I do not recommend anyone watch it for my performance. The film is fine. The film is fun. It was intended to be, you know, and uh, and I don't. Want, uh, I didn't mean to say that like the movie wasn't good. No, yeah. <laughs> I'm in for my performance. Right, your performance. It's my performance personally. I don't. I I just did. I was still trying to make that transition from coming to you know from theater to film, and mm. it's so different. Uh, so there are a lot of things I did very over the top and. Uh, uh, yeah, so that was the first film I did. Everyone that worked on it, though, I, I mean, I, I had a blast. Um, but yeah, that was the first film I ever did. Nice. Uh, East Stackton. East Stackton. And yeah, and I, I didn't take it as you, you, what, what you said. It's you. It was very clear you're talking just about your performance, and and it's. I know that that's <laughs> yeah. got to be. I know that's got to be tough sometimes too. Is like you, you know, um, like you said, theater, and I, I've, I've done chorus i've done theater it's it's funny hearing your your background because i'm like man me and this guy have a lot of parallels although i probably would have been more i probably would have been more of an older older brother type because i was born in the early 80s and i was a he-man and transformer fan and so i was the one who taught my i I was the one who taught my brother the value of of collecting and toys but we grew up outside of mississippi in biloxi um on keeser air force base yeah and we and we all we also went to universal and disney a lot and i now live in orlando but we used to drive there a lot when i was a kid um and that also was my first exposure to movie making and i became a big fan of uh of you know behind the scenes stuff because of mgm studios and universal so it's it's so funny hearing you say all that i'm like i'm like man that's so crazy like (laughs) we we were probably even there at the same time a couple times like Uh, loving the same stuff probably could have been yeah i mean we went all the time when i was a kid uh during the summer yeah me too that was a uh oh man i i haven't been to disney world and uh oh geez it's over 15 years um, so when I graduated high school, that was the last time I went. That was over 15 years ago. So oh, yeah. Man. Well, when when oh, when COVID passes and everything, you and the wife, you guys have an open invitation. You got a place to stay uh, now that I live here. Oh um, man, that would be awesome. <laughs> I would love that. So, um, dude, I would love that. That would love that too. That'd be awesome. One day, one day when we can all breathe again, um, we'll do it. Mm, oh my god. <laughs> um. So be, being on lockdown, though, I mean, obviously, we talked about this earlier, too. It's like how how hard it is to, you know, motivate yourself. I was telling you, I was like, I waited till the end of my lockdown period when I got a job to start this podcast and how silly that was. And, and you were like, yeah, but, you know, sometimes when you have nothing to do, you're like, ah, I can do it tomorrow. I can do it tomorrow. But you, I felt like you've, yeah. you've stayed busy. I mean, you've, you know, I know you did some of the stuff before COVID, but then you've also been working on some indie films. So I, I do want to dive into some of your work. Like, obviously, we'll start with with Venom because I think my audience, a lot of them, got introduced to you from Venom. You know, what was, yeah. be, you know, being a comic book fan and your p- parents are comic fans and stuff. Like, what was that like to get that audition and then or get the car? What was the process like where you're like, and then then what was the feeling like knowing that you got a role in the film of Venom? This was, uh, so it was 2017, um, I think it was September, I'm pretty, it was September or October, yeah, because I started shooting in November, Mm. um, uh, I was coming back from doing this, uh, this film in Mississippi, um, I, I do not even remember it, I just remember that I was only there for a couple days, but, uh, I was driving back and I got this audition from uh, a casting director that I'm, I'm, I'm a big she, she's a friend of mine uh, actually several things that I have uh, coming out she's cast me in um, and so I got something from her uh, she sent it to my agent and I got it and it was just called jeez um, uh, I can't remember the name that they had it under but it was like this guy being worked on and uh, you know it was essentially it was pretty close to the scene from the film uh, there's a little bit more dialogue um, and it was a little more it was a little different but um, I think it was Antidote was it Antidote something like that yeah I think, I think it was I yeah. read it 
I think that's what it was. Um, so I read it, uh, and I did it right before um, I had to go to work because I was doing construction at the time with uh, my buddy Mike. Mm-hmm. Um, we would we were re- restoring some homes in Texas that had been hit by that really bad hurricane. I think it was Harvey Hurricane Harvey or whatever. Right. Um, and so I shot that early in the morning, sent it off. And then, you know, went to Texas to do some construction. And then, uh, yeah, two days later, they said, we need you in Atlanta. You're going to have a call back. And I was like, okay, cool. Because I just thought this was going to be some, you know, I just thought this was some, like, probably, like, 50, 60 million dollar, like, sci-fi movie. But I didn't know, I didn't know who the director was or anything. Right. So, I, uh, I leave for New Orleans. Um from Lake Charles, which is where I was staying at the time. Right. Uh, so I leave from Lake Charles, go to New Orleans, which is a three hour drive. I get there, um, take a nap at my buddy's house and then finish off the six or seven hour drive to Atlanta. So then I get to Atlanta or I'm on my way to Atlanta. And then my agent, uh, tells me, he is like, do you know what this is for? And I was like, well, well, no, so he was like, this is for Venom. And I was like, wow, well, I mean, what <laughs> and he said venom like you know like spider-man and i was like oh oh whoa man and i dude i had slept like i had tried to sleep a little bit like to take a i took a nap with my buddies i didn't really sleep well yeah um so i'm still just really really tired and uh so then i'm like oh wow that would have been cool to tell me afterwards uh, so I right. go there. I meet the uh, <laughs> I meet the casting director. Uh, say hey to her, give her a hug, and um, well, her assistant. And then uh, I'm in the waiting room. And then I see the casting director because the uh, the guy going before me it was just me and him. Uh, I think it, it was just he and I were the the two reading for this for the callback for right. Isaac. Um, he went to the bathroom and. Uh, casting director comes out and uh, says his name and I said oh, I think he's in the bathroom and she said uh, oh well you ready Jared and I was like yeah I'm ready <laughs> so I go in there and then so I meet Ruben yeah. and Ruben's really cool and he's like alright so do you have any idea what this is for and I was like I kind of have an idea but I don't really because I didn't want to let it I didn't know if it was cool or not for my agent to tell me what it was sure. which you know no duh right. I, it was okay for him to tell me <laughs> but I was like ah, I think I have a good idea he's like okay uh, he explains Spider-Man and all that and then uh, he said so this is this is kind of like uh, uh, Alien he said that's what this this was going to be like I was like okay cool so he just chit-chatted with me a bit about uh, you know we're gonna run the dialogue and then he said I just want you to have the floor uh, and just improv something so I improved uh, it was a little different it was well quite a bit different what we saw in the film uh, but I did a lot of this this weird movement uh, I, I mean, for me, it's like Buto and performance, like that, you know, sort of bizarre avant-garde uh, performance art. Right. So I was just doing stuff like that, but as an aliens inside. I mean, he was like, oh, man, that was awesome. <laughs> he said, well, I mean, that one felt great. Do you want to do it again? I was like, sure, I'll do it again. The casting director, uh, she says, good to see you, Jared. Uh, then I leave. And I, I think it was like, a week later I got it I flipped out and man it was fun that whole set was great Ruben was a great director like Riz Ahmed he was he was so he and uh, Jenny were just uh, they were so sweet that was that was one of the most fun experiences I've ever had on anything yeah I remember when the once I saw you on IMDB and I was like oh that's cool I took note of it and then I think sometime soon after they they put in there the name Isaac. So then, of course, I made a video going like, okay, everyone, let's scour the Marvel database and see who Isaac is. You know? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and we were just all kind of going. And obviously, you know, it ha- Isaac has more of a biblical tone in that scene. So I, I so it's not really, Mar- yeah. it's not comic related so much, but it's more of a 
Riz's character's uh, you know viewpoint of the world. So, you know, I I love that scene. It's it's one of my favorites. I, your your performance in it is so good. I love when you when you go on the ground and start twitching. I remember seeing that in the trailer and just going like, how is he moving like that? <laughs> like like. And then I was like, well, they're CGIing the alien on him, but what there's are they CGIing his legs moving like that? Like how how is oh, that? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh man. And uh, and it so. Was... Yeah, your commitment to that was really, it's, it's, it's awesome, man. Like, you really committed to that scene. Thanks, dude. I appreciate that. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it, it was, it was a, a really, really, really long day. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Doing, uh, that was a really long day. Right. But everybody was so nice, like, uh, you know, re- that was probably the nicest thing that I one of the nicest things I got was Riz uh, you know when we would you know talk a little bit in between setups of uh, a new shot uh, I was like dude thanks for the because uh, he was giving me a lot without you know without even saying anything he was giving me a lot by just looking me in the eyes and everything so he is a really really generous actor in and, and, and that way more ways than one but definitely in that way and he was like, "Are you kidding me?" He was like, "I don't have to do anything." He was like, "You're just selling all of this for her." And it was that was really sweet. He was a cool dude. That's awesome. Yeah, he's he's great, and I've seen him with you know behind the scenes stuff with him and Tom, and and, and I've seen him in other movies, obviously, and he's he's fantastic, and and so are you. And from there, you know, I really I kind of had a a, a small knowledge of some of your stuff before, but. Then I was like really hooked because after talking to you and then just seeing you commit to that scene, like I'm a big fan of like I can tell when people have strong work ethics. Um, it's just it's something I got from my grandfather and it's something I got from my mother. I can just I can that's why I'm a good supervisor at jobs sometimes because <laughs> I can tell who's working really hard. And so um, so when I, I followed you from there, you went into the Purge season one. You did the pilot episode. I'm a big Purge fan. So seeing a TV. Oh. TV show of it was great, and I love that you your character is literally called asshole, which I love, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is so great. And you pretty much just get thrown into a trunk of a car and and, and beaten around pretty much for the episode. Um, but you know, from from going from things like that to like looking for Alaska, and then now the new stuff that you know that you're doing that I want to talk about, like you have stuff coming up, and I'll let you pick where you want to start. We have. We have Filthy Rich, where you play a character named Augie, and we have Words on a bathroom wall on bathroom walls. Um, so you tell me which of those two would you like to start? Because I want to save the we we all think we're special for the end. Um, I guess. Uh, I mean, I can talk. I can talk a little bit about, like, a tiny bit about both of them. Yeah, just a uh, tiny like bit. Yeah. Filthy, like Filthy Rich was. Uh, <laughs> that one's really fun. Uh, I actually met. Uh, one of my best friends, another great actor uh, who y'all should follow. His name is Mason Beauchamp. Okay. B e a u c h a m p. But um, yeah, it's uh, ah oh, man. So I'll say it's like a televangelist. Something happens with the televangelist, and uh, you know he he hmm. I was, it's coming out in the fall and it's a comedy. I, I'm still not sure how much I can say of actual of the actual story. Fair enough, yeah. Uh, but the character uh, Augie is, dude. That that one was a blast. Like looking for Alaska was one of the most fun projects I've worked on. But I, I it might be a toss up between that and Augie, uh, between Gus and Augie of, of, of how much fun I had. Um, because this one, I got to be a little truer uh, to myself, or at least myself in high school and everything. You know, he's a little bit of a slacker, and uh, he likes to take a lot of things that relax him. If I could be subtle, uh, he's on he's on he's on non prescription medica- uh, non prescription <laughs> drugs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he smokes them. Okay. And green. Yeah. Very subtle. <laughs> yeah, so he's so he's trying to uh, he's basically trying to blackmail uh, one of these very rich people. He and his best friend, and uh, hilarity ensues because he is an idiot. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
That's awesome. And that comes out in the fall, you said? Yeah, I don't even have a date yet for it. Okay. Um, it's always crazy. It's weird. You, you can never really tell how much you can say or can't say. Because it's like sometimes it turns out they're like, yeah, go ahead and say whatever you want. Right. And it's like you mention one thing and then they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa now. Right. They're like, wait, why'd you say that? And you're like, oh, wait, I thought <laughs> well, you said I mean, yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> Well, that's cool. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to get you in trouble either. Like that, definitely not. Um, no, I mean, I'm kind of at a. I mean, like I do care, but it's also the you know, it, it's not something I'm. I'm not always trying to walk on eggshells about. Um, I just be respectful, but also like I'm not going to stress myself out. Yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah, and I like it's funny because I work like I used to work at Lego and. You would get told so secrets. Cool. At, <laughs> thank you. You would get told secrets all the time about like what's coming out and what's all this, and and no joke. Like if you say one thing, that it you're gone, <laughs> kinda. Because because uh, by talking about, you know, like uh, like for example, they, we have Super Mario sets from Lego coming out soon, and I yeah. knew about them a wa- a long time ago. Um, so customers would come in and go, "You guys need to do something about Mario," and I'm like, "Yeah, maybe one day. I don't know. That'd be hard to do. Nintendo's weird." And uh, and I had to play it off because if I say anything, all that millions of dollars that they're going to spend in advertising, you know, to, to trickle things out, is now wasted. Um, so so I totally get it. Where you're like, all right, I'm not losing sleep over keeping my mouth shut, but you're trying to be respectful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Like I know, uh, it, just, it just blows my mind how difficult it is for some people to follow an NDA. It's like it's really not that hard, man. Just be respectful. And, and kind of feel, I mean, like, I, I think it, it should be, or I think most people, it should be intuitive to know, like, you know, this is okay to say, this isn't okay to say. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it should be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's true. It could be something that's worked out, but sometimes people don't really know what you know it makes the final cut, what is good to say, what isn't. So there's, like, a lot of factors, mm-hmm. obviously. But you... um. Besides Filthy Rich, you also have, like we talked about a minute ago, Words on Bathroom Walls that are coming out. Now, this I saw the trailer for, and I'm going to put a link down below so you guys can see it too, because I think there is a, a release date for this. This looks awesome. Like, I, How did you get involved with this project, and what's it like playing this entity known as Darkness? Um, well... Without, spe- uh, without spoiling anything, obviously. <laughs> yeah, because... Um... Um, well, I can't really say what it is, sure. but what I can say that I did is, um, I, uh, oh, I read for it in March, 2018, uh, same casting director, uh, that I was talking about a while ago through Venom. Right. Um, so I read for this, uh, got a great response. Um, and they said we wanted to see you for callbacks, but it was or for callbacks to meet uh, the director. And I couldn't do that because um, I was working in Puerto Rico on a uh, TV series, and so I had to miss out. And they said, "Okay, well, we'll work around something." Didn't hear anything, and I was like, "Well, okay, well, I guess they found their guy." So um, I got called back months later. Um, October, October, um, 2018. Uh-huh. Yeah. It was actually October, 2018. Yeah. And I went to, uh, so this character was done. The character I played a lot of it was done. Well, it was, it was done in post. So all of my work ended up being done in post as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, oh my God, the film is so sweet. It's, I mean, it says it on the thing. It's about a kid, but this boy has schizophrenia, right. and um, it just treats it so earnestly. It doesn't romanticize uh, mental uh, mental illness, but it also, it like, it doesn't romanticize it, but at the same time, it doesn't, it doesn't make him a pariah. It, I don't know, man. It, it was just done for me. I saw the rough cut, and. Oh, it was it was so good. I, I could go on for a while about how it, it's just a genuinely sweet film. And uh, Julia Walton's book, I highly recommend. It's a fantastic book. 
Oh, it's really sweet. Anytime uh, mental illness is done in a has, is seen in a light where it's you know more positive, I'm, I'm always for it. Uh, and th- this one's done in a pretty uh, I, pretty accessible way. Yeah, when I saw the trailer, I mean, like, obviously there's a, a neat visual style to the movie, um, but there's also, I could tell from just watching the trailer, the amount of heart that was put into the, um, the you know, the, the tough situation to be in with that type of condition. Uh, I there's a, there's a YouTube channel I watch. I try to plug it any chance I get. It's called uh, Special Books by Special Kids. Um, and this guy, Chris Ulmer, he's the host of the YouTube show. He goes and meets people that have different, you know, ailments, disabilities, uh, recovering from something like a burn victims. Like he goes and he talks to them because, oh, wow. because other people don't, uh, talk to them. He, and he, that's the first question he asks is, you know, when people see you in public, how do they treat you? And they say, oh, no one makes eye contact with me. Nobody says hi to me. And after I started watching his videos, that's it completely changed my perspective on that uh, on on how I treat people like that. I did the same thing. I wouldn't make eye contact. So when I worked at Lego, yeah. when I worked at Lego, it totally changed how I interacted with the people that visited. And because of that, we I noticed that more people who were either had an ailment or had a condition or something, they would come in more and more to the store just to say hi to me because I would be the only person in the mall that would say hi to them. And so when I saw this trailer, it, it affected me because I was like, I-, I like that this isn't doing what Hollywood will typically do with a, a schizophrenic movie and they'll make it like this weird yeah. you know, horror thing where the person's a crazy bad person. And it's like, no, there's it's a real struggle, especially with hallucinations because that's what they, you're, you're, you're supposed to refer to it as. So... um. That's great that you got. I don't want to talk about you know because I know there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff. But I'm so glad you got involved in a project like this, and and that even though it took a few months later, that they still remembered you and got you on board because, you know, one you have a killer casting agent person that you work with. Uh, that's for sure. And I'm I'm <laughs> I'm glad they see your talent because you have it. it it's it, in my opinion, like I, it's hard for actors who play smaller roles to stand out, and yet every time I see you in something. You really stand out, and that's why I'm so glad that you have a movie coming up. Oh, uh, thanks, man. <laughs> You're welcome, dude. Uh, and and I feel that way with Ariadna, uh, Martin Batts, Bradford, Ellen, like all of them. They really stood out to me in Venom, and and now I follow all of your careers, and I'm a fan of all of you. And I'm so glad that now, like like I said, we've become friends, and and you know, in a lot of ways. And, Absolutely. And you it's have great. you have this project coming out that, for me really uh, was something that was eye-opening and hit home for me. And I saw the trailer for it. And again, everyone, you can check out the trailer down below. I know you probably can't talk too much about this, but it's called We All Think We're Special. How did you get involved with this project? And and um, and what's it like to play a character like Charlie? Oh, man. I Funny thing on... Uh, thanks. And actually, uh, well, I can talk honestly a little bit more about this one at least uh what's gonna be happening with it um i got involved in this because uh one of my best friends on the entire planet uh he uh, a great actor um his name is will mcgovern and uh he actually plays my best friend in the film and uh his first film was with this director named kirby Foss who ended, you know, who directed We All Think We're Special, but uh, they did a film together years ago, and uh, he said, he, uh, William kept telling Kirby, hey man, we uh, we gotta do a film together, but I met this guy, uh, man, he's, he's I love him, I, I, he and I have to do something together, so Kirby basically wrote this film for us, and uh, the dialogue was much more, um, the dialogue was much more um, what's the word I'm trying to think of a lot of it was much more scripted like but uh, Kirby kind of let us uh, he let us kind of run wild with it I, I honestly think out of every director I've worked with he's the best director I've, I've ever worked with nice. um, but dude yeah man it was uh, it was a it was a great film it, it was rough 
shooting. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I didn't get a lot of sleep during that time. <laughs> um, I did. No, I uh, I did. I had to. Uh, yeah, it's it's like if I. I don't know what it is. You get in, or for me, I, I would like get into that headspace, and uh, which I've learned now. Uh, you know, I can't, I can't push myself, to, or I, I can push myself, but not to the point where it's not only detrimental to my health, but it's detrimental to you know the attitude around set. Right. Um, not that I was mean or rude to anybody. It was just like people could tell I was like constantly annoyed. I was constantly you know, upset. And it just doesn't make anybody comfortable. And, uh, you know, I mean, you watch the film, it, you can tell it's their tension and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, cause it was, it was real, but, um, I wouldn't do that aspect again. I would do everything else again. I would do that. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, man, I'm hyped about it. You actually got to see it. So y yes. Yeah, I, I didn't know if you wanted me to say that, so that's why I didn't. <laughs> well, yeah, you, I, because you know we wanted, you know, before everything was finalized, we wanted, you know, just one or two people's opinion, and I said, well, this is an outside source who doesn't work in the industry, but does review films, reviews comics. So here we go. And I was like, I can send it to my friend. He'll be, he'll give an honest answer. So. Yeah, and yeah. I was I was that blown away by that. By the way, when you were like, "Hey, do you want to watch the film?" I was like, "Yeah, right." <laughs> it's like I was like, <laughs> I, I was like, "Yeah, sure, man. I'll, I'll watch your film." And I'm thinking like, oh, I, I, it's not that I didn't take you seriously, but I was like, I was like, uh, I, I don't know if he really wants me to watch it, or maybe, or if he he might have to ask somebody or something. So when you actually did, you were like, "Hey, here you go. You can watch it." I was like, "Holy crap! He wasn't kidding." So. I remember the night I watched it, it was one of those nights where I couldn't sleep and I was like, I shouldn't watch it under these conditions because I want to be able to pay attention. I go, but you know what, let me put on the first 10 minutes or so and let's see what happens. And no kidding, uh, 10 minutes in, I paused it, I got up, I grabbed a soda, I turned the lights on and I, I wasn't laying in bed anymore, I sat upright and then uh, on my couch and then I just, I put it on and I watched it and I was like, okay, and I got locked in, man. Like you're. Your performance in it is really great, and and I will do when it comes out. I will do a, a proper review for it, and I'll tell people my you know my honest opinion because I I did have a couple critical things, and you talk, we had some back and forth, and absolutely it was it was great, and I I loved um, but you know I know how hard it is when you're an actor and you have to be in almost every scene in a movie, which you are like you and your and your co-star are pretty much in almost every single scene in that movie. And I know that's hard to do and to and to carry that movie like that and all on dialogue and, and visceral imagery. And I'm just going to say, like, you guys nailed it. And your commitment to that role of Charlie um, and, the, and the, the, the things that Charlie goes through in the story was just mind-blowing to me. I thought it was really great, man. Oh, thanks, dude. I appreciate that. Yeah, he was – I mean, he was based off of someone I knew. Um, and it was also based off of my, my time with uh, – my time with addiction mm -hmm. of sorts. Well, you know, my own addictions. It wasn't a uh, wasn't alcohol, but um, I was addicted, and uh, so it was basically just replaying that. And, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it to come out, though. It's something I'm really proud of. Uh, but we we're doing a festival run right now, and uh, we have a few people at least reviewing it, saying, but they're really exciting. Sweet. Oh, uh, so it's it's going in a good direction. Uh, so hoping that we'll get a buyer pretty, you know, at least within the next six months would be pretty awesome. I hope so. I mean, especially with um, considering this whole year went by with almost nothing actually produced and made, I would say you guys might have a even better shot to uh, to get it sold. Uh, because I'm sure people out there yeah, just want so. great content, and I, I'm telling you, it's really good. And when you guys see this movie, you're gonna be you're gonna see what I mean, like about watching actors commit to to scenarios, to roles, to um to like you said, like even in on some level facing something you've dealt with. It's like people don't understand sometimes what what it takes to make a movie, and that's why on the Venom vlog and on other shows, I like talking about how to make a movie because. 
it is a process and it takes a lot out of everyone and it's so great to see you like you know from from like like growing the way you're growing you know you've you've gotten um you've gotten married the past couple of years so congratulations you know to, to yeah. um thanks man yeah and it's and seeing you move in this direction is like it, it's so awesome it's so easy to root for you you're such a, a likable awesome guy and I, and for you to make oh, that, <laughs> for you to make you any know. time for you to make any time out of your day for you know just like a, a nerd like me is just uh and to be friends with me it, it means a lot man normally i have people on this show thanking me for being their friend and uh, you know i i always think i'm back but it, it does it means a lot and you, you've been a, a great dude and a, and a big inspiration to me because i i struggle like i've been writing a book for I don't know, a couple of years now and I'm struggling with it. And then when I saw, you know, your movie, it, it lit something in me and I've been working on my book nonstop. Oh since. man, that's awesome. So, so, uh, so dude, thank that's you. That's beautiful, man. Thank you. Yeah, dude, no Ditto problem. Too, on all fronts, man. Ditto. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so, you know, before we go, is there any last things you'd like to, to talk about? Any last plugs? And, um, you know, and obviously we'll, before we let you go, we'll, we'll mention your social media again too. Um, plugs like, man, uh, I mean, I have a couple of, uh, I got, I pop up a couple times, but it, nobody's watching this movie for me, but, uh, I pop up a few times, uh, on Bill, the new Bill and Ted. <laughs> hey, I saw you in the trailer. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah. I'm, uh, <laughs> oh, but dude, that was a wild shoot. Oh my God. It was fun though. It was just, Yeah. Yeah, and some stuff like after it's released, I'll have to come back on so I'll be able to tell the story. There's nothing. It's nothing bad. It's just like I can't say it now, sure, just sure. because it's the two characters. But uh, yeah, dude, it's it's a funny story. But I was doing that actually while I was doing looking for Alaska and uh, going back and forth from Louisiana to Virginia, where my wife was living at the time, mm -hmm. uh, and she was playing. <laughs> we were doing all the wedding planning and everything oh. uh that was a big old blur that was a big 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 blur those bet. couple months and then filthy rich right after that that was it was nuts man but uh bill and ted uh and if nobody's seen looking for alaska it hasn't been out a full year so if you haven't seen that series i i, I mean i actually enjoyed it that and uh quarry quarry's an old one that i did but that's still a great show that i think everybody should watch Nice. Um, so you guys out there, like I said, I'll put links to a lot of this stuff down below. Definitely the trailers will be down below. Check out Jared. I'll even put a link to his IMDb down below so you can check out his whole filmography and you can uh, look up his movies and check them out and, and be ready for his new movies coming up. And, uh, yeah, I mean, to, and to juggle all that before we go, like you saying, like, yeah, you got like real life stuff. You have your you're planning your marriage, your wedding, your you know, it's like and doing all that it, it, like while doing two films and then going right into a third film after that. It's you're a hard worker dude and it shows and uh, and you know don't give up keep going and I, I love every time I see your name in something or see you post that you've got a project coming up I get so excited for you man and I'm happy to see you keep going oh, I appreciate it man <laughs> you're welcome Thanks, dude you're welcome and uh, where's your I appreciate you you know, anytime dude like I said I was gonna shower you with compliments today um, what is <laughs> what's your social media again so people can find it uh uh, oh, we'll we'll do um, we'll do my my Instagram since mm -hmm. I, I don't really know what my Twitter is, but uh, <laughs> okay. it's all lowercase. Uh, it's all lowercase. Uh, Mister as an M R underscore and then Bankins B A N K E N S. So it's Mister underscore Bankins at uh, at wait not, well, yeah at, not at, at, in, at Instagram <laughs> <laughs> at Instagram whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that's all good man well i'm a nut <laughs> dude you're you're an awesome dude and uh and and again thanks for being a friend and thanks for coming on the show today it means the world to me thank you for calling me on here man i was so hyped dude this has <laughs> been like the high this will be the highlight of my week although my little sister is i am i am able to make a uh a, she is making a trip to come see us so awesome. socially we'll, we'll be socially distanced all of that so i want to make sure everybody knows that we are being safe constantly yes good so that means y'all be safe too um but that those two things that's the highlight of my week man i was i was yeah absolutely thank you so much for having me thank sure. you for being such a good buddy anytime dude Thanks, I'll, brother. I'll always support you and i'll definitely have you back on after some of these projects come out for sure 
Hell yeah, man. I'll be here. Thank <laughs> right. you. You're welcome. And everyone listening, thank you for listening to the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And leave your comments down below if you have any additional questions. Let it be known down below, and we'll get to them down there. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace. Later.